Hi everybody and welcome back to the shed. Um, this video is going to be a review of the Renogy Core 1. Um, this is going to be a part one series of three and I will also cover like the DC home app and how it integrates with the Renogy Core 1 and also the Renogy um, 1 portal on the computer. Um, I was going to make this one long video or I thought it was going to be kind of medium length, but it ended up being like 30 minutes long. So I thought I'd break it up into three parts. Okay. So essentially we're going to be covering, you know, all the ins and outs of the, uh, Renogy core one and a little bit maybe on how it interacts with the other two programs. So let's take a look, you guys. Okay. So we're going to start with the, uh, Renogy core one. And we're going to go over a few of the screens, some of the settings, and um, what we can see going through the options of the Renogy Core 1, okay? So, really, right now we're in the home screen, and it shows our rover, and it also shows the inverter. Now, just really quick, I do have the Smart Shunt hooked up, and if you click over to the middle tab, the Menus tab, I guess it would be, you can see where the Smart Shunt's in play. So back to the home screen, not much we can see there that we can't see on the menu screen. So let's start up with the uh, Renogy controller. I've got the Renogy Rover, the 60 amp Rover. Um, great controller, tends to get a, little, get a little bit warm sometimes, but um, easily cools down. And we can click over there on the controller. Right now it's nighttime, so it's getting typical 3.4 volts for my lights outside. But zero amps, zero watts, and um, power generated. You can see that over time. And oh no, it's a little bit fuzzy. I wonder if we scoop back here. And basically, battery type is user. I set the parameters myself. Now we can scroll up, and we got battery temperature right there also. The battery temperature now, I just have this set up. Um, the probe from the controller is just the ambient temperature in the room. Right now it's 48 degrees. That's going to read different than my battery temperature on any given day. Now, from there, we really can't do much more. So, if we come back over here, let's check. We'll take a look at our um, inverter. The inverter is doing very little right now. I just got a couple things charging off of it, like my laptop and... A phone is charging. <clears throat> um, so, you know, it's pulling about mm, 87 watts, 4%. It's a 2,000-watt Renogy inverter. And looks like I'm looking at 13.3 volts, 60 hertz. And it's running at about 91.4 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty typical, actually, for the inverter when it's operating. It runs a little bit warmer. Actually, it helps warm the room up a little bit, um, keep everything at a good temperature inside the shed here. And so that's about all we can see there. Um, connection method, Bluetooth, and then kind of gives the ID and stuff. So coming back over here to the real fun stuff, we'll go to the smart shunt. And then our smart shunt um, Looks like we're running at 86% of battery power left. We didn't have a great day here today. The last couple of days have been rainy and overcast. That is Southern Oregon weather this time of year. And it's going to get worse. Makes me wish I would have gotten a larger controller, like one of the all-in-ones with the um, backup charger in it, so I could charge on some of these longer stretches of cloudy days. But it'll tell you um, here... Um, you know, the time remaining, I can run at this wattage right now for another one day and nine hours. Um, the smart shunt's actually saying 13.22 volts is coming through. I'm drawing about 10 amps and about 133.97 watts. Um, discharge duration, 17 hours. Consumed amps, 63. This is just kind of the history right here. Um, again, um, temperature of the battery itself is 56.1. I have that temperature probe attached to the negative terminal of the battery pack. That's how I'm going, right at the battery, actually. Running off my mesh system, there's the ID again. And here we have a, kind of a, a settings menu. And via the settings, we got the battery. 
So rated battery, I've got 400 amp hours. Um, I've got basically two 12.8 volt, 200 amp hour batteries hooked in parallel. And then state of star, uh, charge sync. Um, I'm not gonna do anything right there, but we can customize it. We can sync it to zero or sync it to 100. And then it kind of like, um, whatever algorithm that it works with, over time, it actually catches up and it gets to be fairly accurate. Now, let's click back over to here. We've kind of gone through the settings here of the smart shunt. Um, we can also set like stages of alarm. Let's go to the alarm one actually. So in the alarm, we can set the parameters here for like um, uh, low state of charge alarms. And I've got it set to 30%. So when the battery capacity gets down to 30%, the alarm will start going off. Now I have um, the hysteresis set at 5%. So it may go off at like 33% or at least it's got a little bit of a buffer there. So if it dips down really quick to um, 30% and then comes back up, the alarm's not gonna go off, okay? Now we also have um, high charge amps alarm. Um, I've got that on trigger value, 100 amps. I don't run anything over 100 amps for the most part. I did a compressor one day. It went to 100 to 101 for a brief moment and then settles back down. This thing worked as it was supposed to. Um, also has a, uh, let's click on that and take a look at it, see if it has a hysteresis. So it does have a hysteresis value, um, hysteresis, sorry, probably at 5%. So it's got a little bit of wiggle room there. Um, let's cancel out of that. I like that setting. And then let's go back and we got a high discharge amp alarm. Um, that's what we, so trigger value at 300 amps. Um, I'll have fuses that blow before that, um, but these batteries are capable of a discharge of 300 amps. I should actually probably set that down. There's no reason to have it that high. So let's go in here, click it back. Let's go to like, oh, 250, why not? And let's save that setting. That's pretty good there. So we're going to come on back. Um, we've got a high volts alarm. And we should have that on, actually. 14.4 volts. That looks good to me. Um, let's go on back down. Low volts alarm. 11.2 um, is where I have that set up. That's where the inverter will actually um, not work anymore. So at that point, the alarm will go on. It should alert me. Okay. Um, we also have a battery high temp alarm and a battery low temp alarm. I think if you guys had one of these, you could figure out the settings on your own. If you have any questions or want an additional video, I'll go through all that stuff for you. But for time's sake, I think we should just keep this moving because I'm trying to keep these videos a little bit on the shorter side. Um, through here, we can also look at historical data of the smart shunt. So we can come in here. You can clear it if you want. So far with this shunt, since I put it in, we've pulled about 13.19 um, kilowatts is what we produced. Um, total charged, uh, oh, total consumed was 13.19. Total charged, 14.63. Um, kind of gives your uh, max battery bolt, volts, minimum ba battery volts, max temp, minimum temp. Um, all in all, this is a really good tool to uh, have, cannot, cannot say enough good things about the smart shunt um so we've kind of gone through all the devices there um this also has an rv leveling now we're in the shed i am i it's actually fairly accurate i checked it via my levels um according to this and it's um pretty much right in the money probably a little bit off but i think good enough for a camper for sure now in the system we can go through we got network date time uh Display temperature unit, we can pair with the app, restart, reset, power off, all that good stuff. Um, we also have uh, display, we can set sleep mode, backlight adjustment, and we can add additional devices. So that's pretty much a rundown of the Renogy Core 1. Okay, so there's kind of the bare bones review um, regarding the Renogy uh, Core 1. Listen, you guys, it's a good unit. You gotta iron out some bugs and Renogy's working on ironing out those bugs. Have some patience and persistence and it will pay off. Um, this has been a super stable system for me. Um, please check out part two and three. Uh, we're gonna go over the DC Home app and also the uh, Renogy 
one portal on the computer and how that interacts with the whole uh, Renogy communication system. I don't know what else to call it, but hey, check those two parts out also, okay? Thanks for checking in, you guys.